What do you think the chances are that your vehicle will roll over in an accident? Well, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration says it can now estimate which cars, trucks, and SUVs are at risk through its rollover resistance rating. But is it a fair system or just the latest in a long line of questionable safety programs? Our ACE reporter, Paul Mayer, has a report on the history of automotive safety. The new rollover rating has received much resistance from the automotive industry. Activists herald it as a way to force manufacturers to build safer vehicles, while critics say it doesn't factor in driver behavior or road conditions. But this is not the first time the controversy has surrounded a government-mandated safety program. It was the 1940s, and car ownership was at an all-time high. So were speedometers. Vehicles were becoming faster, and accidents were becoming deadlier. Automotive engineers spent most of this decade trying to design a tool that would hold people in during a fender bender or head-on collision. Among the inventions, the sternum strap. However, improper use of the strap led to decapitation, broken necks, and very bad rashes. By 1949, road fatalities were up 34 percent. The 50s and 60s, more unsuccessful attempts at driver safety took shape in the form of the road pillow, family focus, and highway hank. This period also spawned the crash test. Prior to the crash test dummy came the crash test monkey. But due to the rising cost of monkey importation, the program crashed and burned. While most of us remember the 70s as a time of bell bottoms and mutton chops, the government describes the area as progressive. Several states took their own initiative, including California, which passed the now infamous car helmet law. What killed this law from the books was that it wasn't clearly defined as to what constituted a helmet. Studies show that while it may have protected the head, it greatly reduced peripheral vision. <laughs> Highway fatalities were up by 63% at the end of the decade. Following the energy crunch of the 70s, Detroit steered away from gas guzzlers and produced smaller, more efficient econo boxes. Many in Congress thought of these as no more than hefty bags on wheels, and once again, the government intervened. The solution? Self-deploying airbags. The problem? Self-deploying airbags. The simple design was similar to the CO2-operated May West vests worn by Allied fighters during World War II. However, the vehicle's computer was not yet advanced enough to be the brain behind deployment. This left inflation to the driver. In other words, a judgment call. So the guy says, Chihuahua? They gave me a Chihuahua? <laughs> Oh my God, that guy's gonna run the stop sign. While airbags were developed as a result, the 90s brought us more failures, such as the life raft, the backseat driver, and the voice activated braking system. I'll be there at eight. No, you want me there at nine? Okay, I'll be there at nine. I'd like 10, I'd like to sleep in. Yeah, get out of here, you're kidding me. Stop it! So given the government's proclivity for intervention, what will be the future? 